you know, they email you, they're right there, how do I gain more weight, how do I do this? Well, first thing, you get to get your mind in control. It's really a mental thing, and if I get my mind in the right place, the food, the nutrients, the right things will naturally flow into my life, flow into my cells, and they do that when you're relaxed, not when you're tense. Well, manly men out there are gonna see the chapter on this DVD called Meditation and go, I don't care about that, I just wanna have big muscles. Just tell me what to do. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, I didn't have very good genetics for building muscle. I, was a very, I didn't have the right structure, the right muscle mass, my, everything. I, had, I, I really had a lot of strikes against me when it came to that way. I wasn't naturally a muscular guy, or it didn't come easy for me. And one of the things I, I, I recognize is that the top athletes in the world always seem to have a better mental state. And I first came across a Dr. Lee Poulos had a bodybuilding CD and he was a, a, psych, a psychologist that had developed mind techniques about breathing and visualization and stuff like that. And I thought, wow, well I, I knew that other athletes had used this and I, I started doing it as a bodybuilding. And then literally after a while, by getting into these states, I was able to command my body to do things and yes this is possible here's a regular person moving their bicep there's a little bit of flexion and something happened now or i can tense that muscle up really hard and flex it and develop as m now what's different there's no more weight on my hand nothing's changed other than the mental connection that i've put into it and over time you know i can connect it like this or i can just move it like this Big difference. So you build the literally that mind-body connection, connection. And, and, and that's just not a, an, a, an idealist kind of slogan or something. There is an actual reality. Here I was, this you know lifting guy, lifting you know eating weight, you know eating all this protein and lifting weights and all this sort of stuff. But as I develop, and you think that's the way to build that. But as I got more peaceful with myself, as I got more centered with myself and got deeper into meditation. Now my workouts took on a whole new dimension. Now I was able to produce stuff, instead of struggling to get in straight to shape or lose body fat or gain muscle, it became easy because my mind was not resisting me. My subconscious was not resisting me. And that's real strength. Strength isn't in the muscle. Strength isn't in the body. Right. Strength is really in the soul that permeates through the mind that then comes out in physical expression. So it's three stage. Meditation gets you to the top and you can come top down as opposed to trying to build myself from the physicality back up. Describe to some of the people out there who are new to this, what is meditation? Oh, well meditation has been around for thousands and thousands of years and there's a lot of different styles and techniques of focus but Primarily, it's a way of shifting your consciousness, and usually it starts with connection to the breath. Breath is, or air as I like to call it, is, is the connection to your conscious self as to your physical self. And it's the only thing that we can do both consciously and unconsciously. So if I'm not thinking about it, I naturally breathe. But I can think about it and alter my state of respiration. And science has now proven that it does indeed changes uh, brain wave patterns and neurological patterns within the body. So practical meditation is very, very simple. I mean, for me, um, I just get it. I, I read a lot of books on it and took some teachings from some people and then I found a, some techniques that work. Basically, it's you want to get into a place that's in quiet the mind and we have our minds kind of going like this. So to do that, you want to get in a place where you can sit as straight as possible, okay, whether that's in a chair, whether it's sitting down cross-legged if you're really flexible like this, you know, and get your body straight. Start with the breath and start with an exhale, you go and let the air naturally flow in. And for me, I keep my concentration right here at the at the center of the, right just between the eyes here, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of different names for it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to know the names or the formalization or all that stuff. You can get into that later on. Just hold your attention here. In other words, hold your attention here and watch the breath going in and out. So I take the depth breath in. And I just gradually Watch the breath go in and out without trying to control it, without kind of do, doing anything. And by just doing this, you'll find all these thoughts come up. <laughs> and you go, I can't meditate, all these thoughts are going in my head. That's the whole point. The whole point is to first become aware that your brain is going like this, faster and faster and faster. And be okay with it. And then when you catch yourself, 
bring your attention back to the center and watch the breath again. So let the thought go, don't don't focus or dwell yeah. on it. Yeah, we're you not just watch it come in and out. It's like clouds in the sky. They just you know, there. Yeah. So it's just kind of almost you don't detach yourself you just watch it you become an observer and what it does it actually uh, uh, calms down your whole nervous system and you become more relaxed and more receptive and it helps your um, cells function better too it's it's not not to get too esoteric or spiritual or anything like that if anything else it's a stress reduction technique we, we all know about this and you know it, it's been written extensively about but not so many of us practice it actually you know 10-15 minutes a day can do uh, wonders so to sum it up, you're basically letting thoughts percolate like bubbles in water, just to yeah. kind of float, bu bubble up to the top and pop mm. out. And you don't hold on to them, you just let them go. And you kind of just try to focus back on exactly. breathing. And, and, and yeah, and always connect back to the breath. In other words, as you, uh, you, you kind of get lost in your own thoughts. You get following a story or whatever. Yeah, and then you just it, bring it back into the breath. Yeah, and you just bring it back and go back to the breath again and watch your breath come in, watch your breath go out, watch your... And what happens, it's kind of like if you stirred up a, a puddle of water, imagine your, your mind is like a cup of water, and when you first pour the water in, it's all bubbling and rippling and all stuff like that. And as you, your breath slows, you'll, it'll naturally start to slow down and calm down and you'll get less and less thoughts, so it's like the ripples start to smooth. And then eventually, over time, as you practice and get better and better at it, and you can just start with 30 seconds, a minute a day, just mm -hmm. very, very small amounts, let it come naturally. Eventually, your mind becomes just like a pool, and it's relaxed and calm. And what's really amazing about that, oftentimes we'll get stressed out, and we're trying to solve a problem in life. We're trying to think, and we're trying to think our way through it. And I'll go, I can't think about it. And then I'll go, okay, I just need to go meditate. And I'll go meditate, and my thoughts are running around, and I'll just watch the breath for, that'll go on for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll go make myself a smoothie. And then while I'm making them a smoothie, the thought, the thought drops into my head, like, like, oh, the solution <laughs> to the challenge. And I go, oh, okay, or I go, why am I getting so whacked out or crazy about that? It doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. We get stuck in a pattern. It's just a yeah. pattern. It's like a program yeah. running and running and running. It's almost like a reset point when you just see it for what it is. It's just, you know, thoughts running around. And, and also your mood goes from, I would say that when I was younger, I was a lot more aggressive. Mm -hmm. I was a lot more, it, the negative characteristics of, of, of being a man. So it was like... Too much testosterone. Yeah, or, or you know, you know like aggress so aggressiveness or, exp you know, expressing myself in a, in, a, in a dominating, controlling way as opposed to a service and protection type way. Both are, are characteristics of being a masculine man, but it, one is more positive and one tends to be more negative in, 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 in how it comes out. A lot of guys think, oh, just tell me how many, what to eat, how many reps to do, and they don't, and they, they just want to get to the basics, but oh, they yeah. don't realize that if they're tense and upset and stressed out and, and all raging with these hormones that they don't relax and when you're when you're tense like that you can't build and grow and be healthy. Yeah, you will actually create catabolic stress. Well this is one of the big things too yeah the the I, I see so many uh, young guys and uh, particularly who are really driving hard and they, they, want, they want to get bigger because they have these hyper masculine ideals projected out into into the media and stuff and you know as a 15 year old guy or a 20 year old or, or someone who's not naturally that type. First off you're perfect the way you are there's nothing wrong with the way you're built. Every, everything that you're designed by is actually perfect to do what, what it is that you're supposed to do. When you get comfortable with that, you go, okay, how do I relax into it? How do I understand that it's really a mental thing? Now, when I'm working out, we hit the gym. Sure, I'm tense and I'm flexing my muscles and I'm doing all that stuff. But when I'm done, that's done. But you also go into the muscle almost when you, whenever you train in a body part. Yeah, you know, it's like it's almost you go into the muscle, get like it's a meditation of a sort too. Yeah. You know, like yeah. much any exercise is, right? So you get into that muscle, or you get into that uh, movement, whatever it is, and you just kind of become one with it. So it's uh, part of meditation as well, and relaxing into whatever you're doing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, you know, fortunately, we're in a beautiful place right now here in Sedona, Arizona, and we've got the advantage of being out and playing in the rocks and getting the natural sun. And maybe you don't have access to that. I mean, I'm from. 
you know, Canada, where we don't, uh, in particular on the west coast in Vancouver, where we have a, uh, a lot of rainfall, a lot of cloudiness, yeah. and, uh, you know, some days it's just not that nice to be outside, and you can meditate anywhere. You can, you can do the, 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 I do my rebounder right in my living room, I drink, do all these sort of things, and I practice my meditation there. I practice the meditation in my bedroom or just in the, uh, in the living room. I have a little section that yeah. I do. Pick a place that's special to you. Um, where you can get away from your regular routine of the world, wherever that is. Maybe it's in your house, maybe it's in your bedroom, maybe it's in a special place that you have or on a balcony or something like that. That's your little space and kind of make it a, a sacred shrine where you can kind of tap into your own self. And as you do that more and more, then you'll, it seems like automatically the universe kind of gives you these little benefits that you end up in places like this mm -hmm. and you're like, wow and it helps you develop a deeper appreciation for just the absolute beauty and magnitude of who you are and where we are and what we're doing. But we also travel a lot, both of us, and we end up staying at friends' houses or at hotels, and it doesn't matter really where you are, you know, it's the energy that you bring with yourself, your commitment to yourself to um, be healthy and alive and vibrant every day. So. You know, I was just came back from a trip in New York where I was staying in all sorts of different places and every morning I would get up and I do my you know, little stretches, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, whatever I had time for and do my breathing, you know, like all in all, it doesn't take that long. Like honestly, it's like, it takes less time than doing your hair and makeup and you will feel better and you will have more energy to do other things and your skin will look better, your body will feel better too. So it's just like, it's where, you, it's where you put your priorities too and what becomes more important to yourself. So that is all controlled simply by the mental intensity I'm able to generate into my physical body. And so by practicing meditation, breathing techniques, yeah. exercise, and then you can make this part of your everyday life. Whatever it is that you're doing, be there. Be present. In the moment. In the moment, doing exactly what it is. So if I'm making a salad, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I'm in the middle of a grocery store, right? You know, I'm in a, and I'm making a salad. I'm not thinking about everything else. I'm looking at the salad stuff and I'm going, wow, look at these cucumbers, they're amazing. Look at these tomatoes. And I'm putting this together. And the whole process of doing it is complete in itself. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm having such a great time making a salad because I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not thinking about my bills. I'm yeah, not thinking I'm about the car payment or where I've got to go or, you know, the, the fight I had with somebody. I'm not thinking about any of that stuff. Those I'm, things are all catabolic too, you know. So <laughs> they, don't, they don't help you grow muscle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, or stressing out about how much toxins I inhaled. Look, I, I can't control that. I just got to keep doing the best things for it and being present with it and, and, and doing good things in my life. And so that kind of sums it up. If you have stress, you have hard time building muscle and you're Relaxed, it's a lot easier. Absolutely. That's why, mm -hmm. That's why it's important to meditate. Absolutely. <laughs> So let's sum this up. If you're stressed, no muscles. You can't stop stressful things from happening, but you can minimize the effect it has on you with meditation. You need to feel good to be strong. And to feel good, you need to be at peace. The strongest bodybuilders and best athletes get lots of rest and take things in stride. 